Hello everyone, welcome to Unity of New Westminster's celebration service. Please join in the singing of our opening song today. Welcome back. I am Reverend Rona Segarra, and it is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of the community at Unity of New Westminster in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. We would love to stay connected with you, so please subscribe to our newsletter or like us on Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel, and that way you can always know what's going on in our community. The Unity Movement offers ideas for full and abundant living. We draw on the teachings of Jesus, who we consider our primary way shower and example. And we honor that there is universal wisdom to be found in faith traditions, in song, in story, in poetry, all over the planet. We respect and honor every person's right to choose their own life path. All are welcome here. All are worthy here. All are celebrated here. We open our service today in prayer. I gratefully acknowledge that I speak to you on the traditional and unceded territory of the Semiamu First Nation. And we give thanks to First Nation peoples everywhere for their custody of this beautiful land. We give thanks for our connection one with each other. 
that connection that happens whether we are in each other's physical presence or not. The connection that binds us all together. We acknowledge that there is only one presence, that there is only one power, that power that is understood by many names, many faces, and many paths. And we affirm that regardless of the name, the face, or the path of our understanding, that we are one human family. And it is in that knowledge of our oneness that we send a blessing for love, for peace, for contentment to every being on this planet, to every being, regardless of all the labels that threaten to divide us. We are one. And for this knowledge, for this intention, and for the power that we have to bless, we give thanks. Amen. in my life is growing because I choose love love's always present it's what I'm made of I choose love we are a part of each other It can't be undone I choose love
have you ever felt that something in your life is missing and then start to fill that emptiness with food or alcohol and relationship or some other distraction? Have you ever made a new re New Year's resolution which didn't last through January? Or have you ever started a new diet only to regain all the weight you've lost as soon as the diet is over? Maybe you've been a new person in a group and wanting to integrate and be welcomed into the group and then found yourself rejected because you or your ideas are different. Perhaps you've been part of a family or a workplace that is comfortable and not perfect. And yet when somebody else comes into that group, you find yourself resistant to that new person or their ideas when they are introduced to the group. If you can identify with any of these situations, then Jesus' parable about sewing new cloth onto an old coat may offer some insight into why the effects of a quick fix don't always work for us. The story also offers us ideas about how we might more successfully integrate the new into the old. Like most wise stories, this parable is one that can be applied at several levels. And the more you consider the story, the deeper you can go and the more interesting the story can become. Whether it's an inner experience, such as wanting to fill an emptiness inside us, or whether it's considering a new idea that we've never previously considered, or whether it's something that's more physical, such as joining a new group or welcoming a new person into our group. This story can show us how we can add richness to life by putting old and new and creating a new, beautiful fabric. It comes from Matthew chapter 9, verse 16. And it's not very long. One sentence. No one sews a piece of unshrunk new cloth onto an old cloak, for the patch pulls away from the cloak, and a worse tear is made. In fewer than 30 words, Jesus identifies some of the impacts we see when a change is applied in a way that is non-mature. What can we see in this story? Well, Let's just think about this idea. It's basically the idea of taking an old cloak and then adding something new and unseasoned onto that cloak. So let's just think about this cloak for a minute. Picture an old cloak, which is comfortable and well-worn. It may have shrunk some, it may be weathered in places, but if it's functional and it adds protection and warmth, and there's no stress left in this cloak at all. Now, imagine adding a piece of cloth to that cloak. If that piece of cloth, that patch, hasn't been pre-shrunk, then as the patch weathers and shrinks, it will pull on the seams of the cloak. Maybe that cloak has places that it's been so well worn that it is threadbare in places. And then it's possible that the wind and the cold can come through and cause actual discomfort for the person wearing it. And the temptation would be then to take that area that's blank and sew a new patch onto the cloak. And at first, again, sewing it would seem like it would solve the problem at first. 
but the patch will eventually shrink. And as it shrinks, the new patch will pull on the old garment and add stress and tension to the seam until the hole becomes even bigger. What if instead we could picture a cloak which is warm and comfortable and welcoming and covered with patches that are seamlessly attached. This is the cloak we want. It is interesting, expansive, vibrant, inclusive. This is the cloak that we want to get to. Well, in order for that to happen where we have a cloak which has new patches on it, but the patches are colorful and seamlessly added, the cloak needs to be flexible and spacious enough to accommodate the new patch, and the patch itself needs to be pre-shrunk, flexible, expansive, mature. Well, I'm talking to you about cloaks and patches. What does that mean? Well, think about cloaks for a minute. Why do we wear them? The cloaks are that in our lives which provide warmth and comfort and protection from the elements. Cloaks represent anything which are comfortable and familiar for us. They can represent our belief systems, our approach to life, our attitudes, our values, the things that help us to feel secure and protected, both inward and outward. Outward, the cloaks can represent the families we belong to, the groups we belong to, our friends, our workplaces. They can be the things that represent comfort and security to us in a mature in material way, maybe our homes, our cars. In short, cloaks represent anything that offer us a sense of comfort. Think of the cloak as our security blanket, our worldview, our comfort. What does the patch represent? Patch represents something which is new, which we could add to our cloak, a new idea, a new person, a new thing, something that if we add our patch wisely to our cloak, will give us something that is new and inclusive and expanded and interesting. But if it's added unwisely, it will cause a tear. We need a flexible cloak, one that is open and accommodating enough so that we don't lose out on the added benefit of the new patch. And we need a patch which is seasoned and bigger than it needs to be so that it can also add to a cloak. And in this metaphor, sometimes we can be the cloak and the things that we own and the places we belong to can be the cloak. And sometimes we're the patch. Sometimes we're the new person or the new idea. Always we are the tailor of our experience. And as Jesus' words remind us, we don't want to sew a new patch onto an old garment. That is, it is difficult to add something new and immature to something which is older and potentially inflexible. For many years, I thought that this parable was a suggestion that we discard our old belief systems and ways of being, that instead that we should choose fresh, crisp, clean new ideas and just say farewell to some of the old. 
that essentially that in order for transformation to happen, we want to put on a new cloak and throw away the old in favor of the new. I've since adjusted my thinking about this because it's not really realistic. And often when we do something like that, where we throw the old away, we throw out some of the good that was part of our old experience as well. I think change is more complex than simply walking away from the old and embracing the new. Instead, I think the message of this parable, these 30 words, is that if we want an interesting, full and expansive life, which is represented by the cloak, then we want to introduce changes represented by the patch in a very intentional way. When we want to expand ourselves and introduce change, we want to remember that tension is likely and we want to handle with care. Let's look at some of the ideas really briefly about this parable. First, let's consider the quick fix. The quick fix of the unseasoned patch. You know, every day we put on beliefs and habits which, like that warm and cozy cloak, provide us with a sense of protection and comfort. And then sometimes as we grow up or as our situation changes, a previously held belief is laid bare. Perhaps a new idea grows into our awareness and stretches our previous sense of comfort. Or perhaps something happens in our life which rips our belief system apart and the cloak of our habits and beliefs no longer provides the same comfort and protection. Where once we felt completely at ease, now there are spaces in our life where we may feel exposed and uncertain, vulnerable or empty. And what do we do? We we'll try to patch that cloak. And so we look for a quick fix. We look for a new habit, a new addiction, a weight loss thing that will be fast, or a new job, or a new spouse, or a new drama, or a new car, a new house, anything to fill the hole which is now causing discomfort for us. And for a while, that patch seems to work, and our sense of well being can be restored until eventually the excitement of the new patch wears off. And as that novelty begins to shrink, the gap in our cloak of comfort is revealed once again, and we embark on another search for another quick fix. It is not the way to have an enduring impact on our comfort. Sometimes, and I know this has happened for me, there are times when we make a new discovery that excites us and we just want to give so much of our attention to this new thing. It may be a person, a new romantic relationship, it may be a new religious idea that captures our attention and we devote all of our energy to it. Sometimes at the expense of our old relationships or our old ways of being, we adopt that new patch and allow it to become our coat. And as I said earlier, when we do that, sometimes we leave behind things which can still have value for us. When we go all in on the new thing, and turn away from our old friends, our old families, 
sometimes we burn bridges that we really will regret burning. Then when we discover that that new shiny thing also has imperfections or the program runs out or our energy or passion or money for that program, whatever it might be, or person for that matter might be, when all of that runs out, we turn back to our old ways and can find ourselves at times a little lost. If it was a fad diet, we may then find that we regain all of the weight that we've lost and then some. Or having given up on the passionate cause that we have now devoted ourselves to and now turn away from, we can find ourselves cynical. If we've turned away from friends and family and devoted all of our attention to a new love relationship, for example, then the friends or families who we turned our backs on will be waiting in the wings if we're lucky, ready to reconnect with us, even if they feel a little hurt about how we drop them. In all of these cases, the quick fix is the equivalent of sowing a new immature patch onto our way of being, onto our cloak. And when that patch breaks, it can cause a rift or tear in the fabric of our worldview of our being. I think a more realistic and practical approach than the quick fix is to look and how we can integrate new ideas, new people, new experiences into our existing cloaks in a more intentional, deliberate, slow, enduring way. And to do that, we want to then look at not just the patch, but also the cloak. How can we have the patch and the cloak seamlessly come together, the old and the new? Let's take a look for a second at the patch on the assumption now that it is going to be a new thing, that new habit, new idea, new person that we want to add to our experience in an intelligent way rather than in the quick fix all or nothing way. If we are trying, for example, to form a new habit, then what research has shown is that we are much more successful if the changes are small, if the patch is able to fit into our existing way of being rather than finding a perfect patch and then trying to adjust everything else to fit that patch. It's, it's the sort of thing like going and, and beginning a new exercise program and being absolutely committed to it for, oh, I don't know, a day and a half. And then we get so upset with ourselves that we give up on it and we don't get off the couch. Instead, let us introduce a habit in a way which is sustainable rather than something that is feast one day and famine the next. The, the next. Let us think of these new ideas as things that need to be mature for us rather than essentially unshrunk and then pull on us as, they, as we try to fit them into our lives. The Italian philosopher Voltaire is attributed with saying, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. This is an example of an unseasoned patch 
how often have we failed to knit something new and good and practical and productive into our existing fabric because we need it to be perfect. Rather than a perfectly unsustainable patch, let us choose to go slow and introduce an idea, a habit, a new belief system, a new person into our life, one step at a time. Let the patch shrink and become part of our everyday fabric so that it will add to rather than pull at our lives. Sometimes we are the patch. Sometimes we're the new person. We're the person that we're hoping to integrate into somebody else's cloak, somebody else's team or family or workplace or way of being. What can we learn about what we want from a patch? so that we can add to someone's cloak rather than tear at it. Well, essentially what we want to do is arrive pre-shrunk. What does that mean? It means that we want to be flexible and expansive so that we aren't pulling on the existing fabric we want to show up whole enough that even if people resist us, that we can accept that. In fact, wisdom demands that you should expect that you coming in as a new person should expect some resistance. Know also that expansiveness means that you don't need to prove your worth, that you don't need to insist that you, the new person, that your way is the one right way. Instead, remember your intention, which is to unite with the existing fabric and to add color and depth and make meaningful connections with the fabric, with the people, the team, the family, so that this new fabric, this new cloak that you are joining and being a part of is something that you are adding to. So intend to join well with gentleness, with curiosity, with generosity. You will enrich the warmth of the fabric. Your gifts will flow naturally. Don't need to prove it at all. And I alluded to them, to this earlier. Just be aware that coming in as the new person anywhere into a group, even if a group is missing a certain thing that you can fill. Be aware that the group may be pretty comfortable together and that they may resist or even resent your presence. During expansion, tension is likely. Your motives may be questioned. You may be faced with resentment or bitterness. Don't be surprised if you experience this resistance. Don't take it personally. Instead, be the patch which is generous, expansive, flexible, so that you can make connections and add yourself to the cloak. Arrive pre-shrunk, flexible, generous, prepared, 
ready to be put to good use. What about when we are the cloak? What about when a new idea is presented to us and we are the old guard? We are the cloak. We are the seasoned, comfortable, everything's fine people. They are basically the things that we are already accustomed to. I think of it as the old guard, the organization or family or team which has been together for a while and is comfortable together, even if there are some clear deficiencies in some areas. Sure, they're not perfect, but for the most part, everyone is used to everyone else. Everyone's used to their idiosyncrasies. They know what to do. They know what to say. They know what works. They know what doesn't. And so, you know, they are pretty comfortable. Thank you very much. Well, that's the old guard. That's the cloak. That's the inflexible cloak. And if you've ever been part of the group, you'll know how easy it is to ignore or dismiss that new person who comes into and tries to join it. We have a tendency to, at the best of times, treat that new person with curiosity. And often something that's a little bit more malicious than that, like skepticism or mistrust. We know that that person is likely to impact us, but we don't quite know how. And so we resist the change until we can trust that that new person will add value. And then, and only then, are we typically ready to welcome them into the group. That same resistance of the old guard is true for new ideas and beliefs. It could be a religious viewpoint that somebody brings a different idea into for us to consider or a political idea or a medical idea or anything else where there's a change, a scientific belief. These are all places where we have cloaks and our, the, our view of the world forms that cloak of comfort for us. And boy, do we stay close and loyal to those viewpoints that we have, even if they don't always have the answers that we seek. Sometimes we're just not interested in hearing other points of view because it can be uncomfortable. We don't want to stretch and meet and connect with that new idea. But remember, our goal is to have a more full and colorful and functional and interesting and expanded experience of life. It's to have a new, interesting and expanded cloak. If we aren't willing to stretch and welcome new ideas or people, then we may miss out on the richness and vibrancy of improved relationships or interesting ideas. We will build a better garment if we are flexible, if we say yes, if we say welcome, tell me more, if we stretch the old toward the new, make an intentional union. When we're part of the old guard, let us be the first to stretch our hands out with welcome, knowing that during expansion, tension is likely and we want to handle with care. And so, when we face changes in our lives, 
And when we're considering the late relationship between the old and the new, and we are trying to marry them together. Let us remember the wisdom of Jesus's teaching that no one sews a piece of unshrunk new cloth on an old cloak, for a patch pulls away from the cloak and a worse tear is made. Remember, we are the tailors. So let us be wise enough to avoid the quick fix. Let us ensure that we don't take on too much too quickly and turn away from that which is already good in our lives. Let us instead use discernment so that instead of jumping to a quick fix, that we instead bring the fix to us more slowly so that it becomes more seamlessly able to fit into our lives so that it shrinks slowly and doesn't tear as much. In this way, we take that good idea or that new idea and we add a pre-shrunk patch, something that is mature, that is sustainable, and that adds color to our cloak. Then, let us remember to be the cloak which is willing to be stretched, that even when we are the old guard, that we want to be able to expand ourselves and be willing to reach and make connections with the new. In this way, we reach for something new and innovative. We are open, we are flexible, ready to stretch ourselves and welcome the new rather than resisting it. And finally, let us remember that when we are the new person, let us be flexible, let us be larger than necessary, and let us be expansive so that we add to the fabric of whatever we are joining. During expansion, when we connect the old with the new, tension is likely. Let us remember to handle both the old cloak our old way of being and the new, the new patch with care. Let us be flexible. Let us be expansive. Let us be willing to stretch and willing to work for the good of this new expanded fabric. Your garment of life will be enriched, it will be more comfortable, it will be more expansive, it will be more colorful, it will be more interesting and more inclusive. During expansion, tension is likely. Handle it with care. Stretch. Stretch. I bless you. My religion is kindness. My church is nature. My God is a feeling that lives deep inside My job is to be conscious My path is forgiveness My religion is
is kindness And I practice it every day Everyone has a story Everyone has pain When we strip away our masks We find that we're really all the same It's those little things we say and do That can mean so much It's a smile, a connection A simple love and touch My religion is kindness My church is nature my God is a feeling that lives deep inside My job is to be conscious My path is forgiveness My religion is kindness And I practice it every day Every day Today I'm gonna ask myself What more can I do? Can I do that? To be a radiant child of God And let my love shine through I'm gonna let my heart be my guide To give the best of me Share my joy, share my love, give it groundlessly. My religion is kindness, my church is nature, my God is a feeling, and live deep inside. My job is to be conscious, my path is forgiveness, my religion is kindness, and I practice it every day. Join us on Zoom on Mondays at 1030 for a time of prayer and meditation. All are welcome to join us as we share a time of connection and renewal and as we hold people in prayer. At this service we check in and share with each other. We have a time of guided prayer and we read the names of the people on our prayer list. It is an uplifting and restful experience. All are welcome every Monday from 10.30 a.m. till 11.15 a.m. on Zoom. Please join us. I'm saddened to share with you the news that Hazel Swanson passed away earlier this week. Hazel used to be a member of Unity of New Westminster many, many years ago. 
she and her son Gary and her family were part of the Youth of Unity movement and were very involved in a very dynamic youth and children's program at, at Unity of New Westminster. Our hearts and our sympathies and condolences go to her family. And when we know a bit more about the family's plans, we will let everyone know what the plans for a celebration of life will be. On Saturday, May the 14th, a handful of us braved the elements at Unity of New Westminster, and we broke ground on our medicine wheel labyrinth. Lyle blessed and led us through a consecration of the ground. And then each one of us took a shovel and turned the ground over. It is the start of the next phase in our medicine wheel labyrinth project. In the next few weeks, we'll be taking, digging down um, so that we have four inches or so of space for the concrete to be placed. Remember that this medicine wheel labyrinth will be wheelchair accessible and open to the public. And it is something that we're very, very excited about. So thank you to Lyle and to Aaron and to Barb and Gisela who joined us as we broke ground and consecrated that ground for this new and beautiful project. We are grateful for the financial support which we receive from those who enjoy our programs. With the pandemic, some of our expenses have been lessened and some of our expenses don't go away. So thank you for your generosity, which supports our ministry. We give a portion of our income to organizations that do amazing work in our community, both locally and in our province. So your gifts make a difference in lives. We welcome donations by credit card, check, cash, or our preferred method, Interact e-transfer to Unity of New Westminster at gmail.com. Interact is free of service charges. Thank you. Now, please bring to your hands, to your hearts, or to your minds, something that you are grateful for. As we give thanks and remember how much we have to be grateful for. We are so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I I am so grateful, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have, I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful. And we come to the end of another service. I thank you for joining us. I hope that you enjoyed your experience with us today. I wish you all a very, very blessed week. Goodbye, everybody.
peace that was meant to be with God as creator, family of we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment. We are the light of God. We are the light. 